So before I start, I'll just have a quick whiz through the palettes here. We've got Ultramarine, Lemon Yellow, Payne's Dry, Glycerine Crimson, Raw Sienna, um, Umber and Light Red. We've got my large height brush here and the water. Just take a bit of the excess off and I'm good to go. Just cleaning it all over with clear water. Hairs go a bit funny, so I'll just dip the tips in just to bring them all back together. And then, um, I've no real plan about what I'm going to paint this time, uh, I'm just going to make it up as I go along. So I'm just going let's just go light red, lemon yellow, and just bash some of that in. More red. More yellow, bit of raw sienna. Right, let's start to darken it a bit. Um, I'm going red, blue, and push that in a bit. Let's go red, blue, a bit of black, I think. Let's really darken it with the Payne's Grey, light red Payne's Grey mix, and then I'm just brushing that down there and across there. Just try and create some sort of drama going on. Like a sort of, could be a, a sunset or something like that. Bit more yellow. Blue, black, I say black, paint's grey, ultramarine. What I've done, because this is often proud, I've just stuck a, I've stuck my little height brush there, just to bring it up to this, so it doesn't keep catching my brushes. I go like this. It's starting to do me in. So that in place, a bit of tissue, a few little white clouds in there. Try not to go over the, over the top. Keep it subtle. Do a few, step back, take a look at it, and see what it looks like. Does it need any more? If not, just stop. So hard to stop. Don't keep feeling. Um, and then all those sky colours, they're all still on the brush, I haven't cleaned it. Uh, let's just put a bit of land somewhere about there. Bit of red. Um, let's have this going a bit higher, a bit higher. Um, is this going to be water? No, it could work. Well, let's pull down some reflections. And you can see where the paper's still wet, the reflections are nice and soft, and when it's dry, You'll get the harder edges. But it's not the end of the world if it's dry before you've got them in. See, I didn't mean to do that, but I'm just going to leave it. Um, or shall I leave it? Actually, let's, I'll try a quick repair job. Let's see if it does work or not. I'm going to take the, uh, the rig out. I'm just going to like that and then give it a dab. See what it looks like. Don't look too bad. Now the paper's stretched. Just move the water jar out of the way. So I'm just going to pull it tight so that it's flat again. And then really clip it there with these big clips. Some people tape it around 
Um, there's loads of different ways of doing it. It's, it's up to you, it's just personal choice, really. I just prefer the clip so you can just get on with it without so messing about with tape. See if I can, no, it's too dry now, I can't brush anymore, and I can just about see it, it just doesn't look right. Um, let's put a bit of something over on this side. Um, I still haven't cleaned the brush, by the way. Um, you can clean it if you want. Uh, what I will do is see how the hairs are starting to separate. I'm just going to dip the tips in. Let's just bring that water jar into view so you can see what I'm doing. Just dip in the tips in the water. So just to bring, see how it just brings the hairs back together. And then take the excess off on the lip of the jar. Any more, take the rest of the excess off on the tea towel. And you've got a sort of nice clean hike to go with. If I see any hairs, I'll just pull them out like that. Otherwise, you'll end up with them on the paper. So, uh, just working your way around the palette, taking a bit of everything, really. Um, what should we do? Let's have a sort of landmass there, yeah, something like that. A bit of green, a bit of grass growing on the side. And that's coming down. Maybe a bit of brown, I haven't used brown yet in this one. Um, I don't normally use this many colours. My paintings, they often tend to be uh, a bit bleak. I do like, I mean I like colour as much as the next person. I also like sort of bleak and moody type of scenes. Sometimes I only use like two or three colours. Um, Let's pull down some reflections on this as well. You can see because it's paper's dry. You don't get the soft edges that you did there. It, it doesn't really matter. What we could do is uh, just do some really small little rocks. Um, now I'm not saying those for the foreground, I think. So there's one layer there. There's another layer there. So I'm just going to stick the foreground, just to balance it out, let's stick it over on this side because it's coming towards us, distant and then the sort of middle ground there and then the foreground over here, just sweep that across. Into the blue just to make it darker, that automatically gets your paints grey for dark. The, uh, the blue, ultramarine, works very nicely, it's when you want to darken the mix. Bits of land there sticking out, coming down into the foreground, just fill that little bit in there, and then just helps create that sense of depth. Got our foreground interest there. I'm going to take a just a plastic card, just, just like a credit card or whatever you've got, and then because the paint went on fairly thick, I haven't got to wait for it to dry or anything like that, so I can just scrape these rocks. Well, they're, not, they're like little pebbles on the shore, just little stones. Um, just trying to keep them really small. I'll just stick a big one in there if you like. That'll do, just gives a bit of foreground interest. Um, I like to have a little yacht, a little yacht somewhere sailing off into the distance over the horizon. So I just need to make sure that that's dry first before I do this. And then often I'll make sure that it's dry by using the air dryer. That's all that needs, just to make sure that air is dry because I'm going to put a the yacht in. Um, now the easiest way I know of painting yachts is to take a clean bit of tissue. I often have, t I mean tissues, I, I often have like a dirty bit and a, and a clean bit. The dirty bit does more sort of subtle clouds in the sky because it's not as absorbent, it doesn't take as much paint off. And then a clean bit, if you really want to get down to the whites of the paper, like I do with this sail now, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take this, 
this uh, number three rigger. Just take the excess off on the uh, T-tail. And then work out where I want to put my boats. So I reckon somewhere about there. Because I can get that in there. And there's a bit of dark underneath it where I can get the reflection in. And all I'm doing is just using a damp brush, not very little water on it. Well, I have any water on it really. So if you've got much water on it, I'll just sort of pull up. And I'm just doing like a triangular shape. And then clean a bit on the what's on the tissue. And then press down and you're sort of getting down to the white of the paper. And just give it like a nice little focal point. Don't forget the reflection underneath. I often don't do the reflection as strong as the, uh, the bit above it. Just so it looks as if it's reflecting something. That'll do. And then just leave like a little gap between the two, a little darker bit, which is like the, like the body, the dove hull, or whatever that is, I call it. So that's just a nice little focal point. That's all it needs. You can have more boats in if you like, or I'll row them, or like, you know, all different sizes. Obviously, the smaller they are, but the further away they look. Um, using the sky colours again, which was a, pretty much a mix of everything, really. I'm just going to get onto the brush. Uh, just try and do some very, very, very subtle birds flying. Try and do as small as I can. And then last but not least. Then this corner, I'm going to put me a signature. And I'll call that one finished. So uh, let's go in and have a, have a closer look at it. So this is our finished painting. If we just start off with the sky. Um, in fact, first thing that jumps out at me, it would have been better, I think, if I'd have reflected a bit of this red in the water. I think that's missing. And then that repair job. It come off pretty well actually. You can hardly know, you just see a little bit of white on the paper. Um, so the sky was a mixture of a lot of the brighter colours, the light red, um, raw sienna, lemon yellow, try that sort of sunset, sunrise sort of effect. Also a lot of the white of the paper left behind as well just to get that sort of real brightness, especially in contrast to the darker clouds further up and a few of the white clouds took, took out with the uh, tissue. Distant land, I always put in using the same sky colours. You see as it sort of fades away into the distance. A lot of blue as well, trying to help pushing it right back. Put the reflections in as well. Helps create that illusion of water. And the mass of land on the far side as well with the reflections put down. Ground here is broken up using the corner of the plastic card just to help create the illusion of these rocks and stones and pebbles on the on this sort of foreground beach. The focal point is our little boat here sailing off into the distance, not forgetting the little reflection below. Just try to do these tiny little birds up in the sky just to add a bit of life. I hope you like that. Thanks for watching. Any questions please ask. Keep practicing and I'll see you again soon.